Well, good morning, everyone. I am Chantal McGarrigal, Corey. So many of you usually know my last name. I had a lady come in the other day, and I taught, we started talking. She was from somewhere, a small town nearby. I think one of them was Rusty. <laughs> Rocky? Yep, that's the one. So that's my, my dad. So, But uh, I want to talk to you. I am the executive director of Midwest Mission, which is a Methodist ministry um, that is supported by lots of people from the United Methodist Church in the north central jurisdiction. So you're looking from everybody from Ohio to Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Tennessee. So we cover a huge area. Um, so it gives us a lot of places to show God's love in a practical way. So I'm going to start off with the scripture this morning, 2 Corinthians chapters 9, verse 6 through 15. So remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your profession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of their surpassing grace God has given to you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I want to start with a story this morning that kind of describes this whole thing that we get to do at Midwest Mission and that we get to do through the United Methodist Church. And we get to see God's hand in motion every day. It's just this incredible thing that he arranges. And sometimes when you're in the midst of it, you don't see it. It's kind of like a quilt. On the back of it, it's really messy looking. But when you turn it over, it's this beautiful artwork. So we, um, we make desks out of reclaimed wood from bleachers from schools, and it's a green project, but it's also a great thing that takes uh, school furniture into schools that it's not that they're upgrading their furniture, it's that they have no furniture, that kids are sitting on the ground. Um, so it really increases their ability to learn and focus, and we truly believe that education is the way to, you know, uh, counter poverty at home and around the world. So in this instance, um, we had a special request for our senior desks to be made from a group from Ohio, and they were going to send them to this school in Haiti, the mission school in Haiti. And they were all excited about it. The desks were made, and it was time for them to go out, and the shipping fell through. And they were devastated. And we said, don't worry about it because we have room. I have a 30,000 square foot warehouse. We can find a space to keep these for a little bit. And they called up one day and they were so excited and they said, we have the shipping. We've gotten somebody else to volunteer. We can get it to Haiti. All we need for you to do is to get it to Ohio by tomorrow. Okay. That's not a problem. We never have anything going on. No volunteers, nothing. Um, but so as God had had it already arranged, that who's there that week but a team from Ohio. And the team, two people from the team, volunteered to take those desks to Ohio. And so they made it there on time. And in March of last year, they made it to the mission school uh, where they were. So uh, he just, we see his hand at work in so many ways. So we'll go. I'm going give, to be given thumbs up so she knows how to, um, I think you guys are all thumbs up, but that's how she knows to advance my slides. So we see God on the move in ways like this and his hand on our ministry in so many different ways. 
So Midwest Mission started in 2000, and it started by Reverend Jack Travelstead. Some of you might know him um, because he had taken so many trips to Haiti and saw what an impact we could make there. And then he was also a big part of disaster relief help that was happening all up and down the Illinois and Mississippi River of the flooding in the 90s. And they decided that we needed a place in the north central jurisdiction that we could centrally have these things and put them together and answer that call to disaster. So it is through your generosity that this happens and the generosity of many people around our denomination. Uh, in 2018, this is our statistics. So we did 199 domestic shipments, 26 international shipments, oh, 27, sorry, 27, and sent out $5 million worth of supplies. So this kind of goes back to the story of when, you know, Christ was able to feed multiple people with just a few loaves and a few fish because our operating budget is $500,000 and we're able to take that and get $5 million of supplies out um, through leveraging multiple partnerships and multiple gifts that we receive. Um, so go ahead. In 2017, we were able to do that to the tune of $4.6 million. And in, especially within the disasters, um, we sent out $1.2 million in direct response to Puerto Rico and what was happening in Florida and the Carolinas. So we partner, we are a United Methodist Committee on Relief, UMCOR, uh, Cooperating Depot. And there are multiples of those around the country, but we also are our own individual 501c3. So that means we love our Methodists, we partner with our Methodists, they're our main branch, but we can also partner with other organizations, which really opens up doors for us. Um, so we partner with Food for the Poor, and our focus right now is with them and with our United States military, they have a, a humanitarian branch that they do these missions, and they're able to take these things into 17 Latin American American and Caribbean countries. So when you see our international shipments, that's where a lot of those are going. Um, we also partner with a group for a long term that has built a hospital in Ghana, Africa, and we do two shipments of year, a year into that place. And the, one of the doctors there has a story of a child with uh, asthma, and he was, uh, they came in to get treated and they lost the electricity, and he was somehow able to wire a car battery up to make a nebulizer work to save the kid's life. But some of those things, I had asthma real bad as a child and was hauled off from um, the junior high school in an ambulance one time from that. But, and it just is amazing to me to think that, you know, some kid out there doesn't have a nebulizer and some kid out there doesn't have an inhaler. And uh, sometimes we take those things for granted here. And it's just a miracle that we are able to get these things into the hands of people that really need them. And in everything we do, we let them know that why we're doing what we're doing is to show God's love because somebody loves them far away. And that's just grace in a practical way. So there, um, can you go to the next slide? So as we are part of the UMCOR Cooperating Depot, these are the other depots in the UMCOR Disaster Relief Network. So you can see uh, we're the only one, there is one in Missouri, but we coordinate for them. So we take care of the Midwest uh, here. Um, there are two depots that are UMCOR depots themselves that get uh, funding from the Global Board of Ministry, but the other ones operate as individual 501c3s. But we all work together to make this great disaster relief effort uh, happen when it happens. And um, I know the amount of time I spent in this community, we saw a lot of it from a fire at somebody's house to flooding in Broadlands to being in high school in Ogden being taken out by a tornado. And uh, that has really given me a heart for disaster response, but to also see what a community can do when a community pulls together, loves on one another, and supports one another. And that has really um, driven me in this, in this work. So go to the next slide. Um, UMCOR, you guys are all probably very familiar with UMCOR, but they made some changes in 2018, and they're no longer shipping internationally. They're giving grants in country, and they got rid of four of their kits. Um, we've taken on two of those kits because where there's still a need, somebody needs to step up and fill that need. Um, one of the reasons they got rid of the birthing kit is because the World Health Organization said, moms should have babies in hospitals. Great, but that's not practical. <laughs> um, they're just not there, they can't afford it. So when practical and policy don't meet, you have a gap. And we're happy to stand in that gap and support uh, mothers having healthy births around the world. 
So we um, focus in four main areas. We do a lot, but the four main areas we focus in is number one, disaster response. And that's where we partner with UMCOR. So we do the cleaning kit, the personal dignity kit, and then the tornado kit is the one we came out with last year. And I was there and responding to the tornado that happened in Taylorville. And it was amazing to see that we did our homework because there was 22 organizations there offering supplies to people, but we were the only one that had a tote, just like a tote. And guess what people are looking for after a tornado? They're looking to get their stuff together and put it away. So um, we were, we're always looking for that. And because we are a small organization, we can make change quickly. Uh, I make change more quickly than sometimes my staff would like, but they're learning to keep up with my pace. So uh, the next area we focus in is education. So we do the school kit, like we talked about with the kids, the teacher kit, and we make the school desk. And those are some children in Kenya. The above one is in Nigeria. So that's the one-handled school bag that is made and, and given out to students. And in that, they receive a prayer card with that so they know that it's from us. And we have our volunteers sign that so they know that it was packed with love. Uh, the next slide is just a visual of our school desk and what that looks like. That's a school in Ghana, Africa. And we ship out about 500 of those a year. They are quite the labor of love. And sometimes those get shipped out by our military. So this is a picture of the desk. And you can see under the cargo net there the, Im the images of the desk. And we took them out of St. Louis. And then they, they did an exercise. The Air Force used it as an exercise and flew them to Charleston. And then from there, they got flown into Bogota, Colombia. So we dropped them out on a Wednesday. They were dropped on a Saturday, which is like, whoa, like lightning speed in our business business because we're sh used to si shipping things um, by like a 40 foot truck tra trailer uh, container which can take like three months not a few days so uh, we love partnering with our military um, the other thing we're really big on with our partnerships is making sure that things get to who they're intended to get for and uh, we're really big on that, and that's why we have the partners we do. But when you give something to the military, they don't have to deal with customs, and they know you know that it's going to get to where it's intended to go. Um, and sometimes our soldiers have a little bit of a harder time getting things in. And in this instance, they, the road wasn't paved, and it was a rainy season, and they couldn't get a vehicle down it. So they put those desks that weigh 55 to 60 pounds on the back in their rucksack, which also weighs quite a lot, and took them seven miles into the Belize Rain rainforest. So think of Illinois in August. That's what it felt like for seven miles. Um, but you can see them and they arrived at the school there. And it's a great thing with our military because not only are they doing humanitarian work, they're partnering with the other military, building relationships, which is what we're all called to do is build those important relationships and to teach them how to be humanitarians as well. So the relief lasts a lot longer than when we go in and it stays when we're there. So this is our soldiers passing out those one-handled school bags. And I love that little girl in the yellow and her big eyes. You can just see how lit up she is. Um, and then this is uh, some more pictures of those schools handing out. We love our education kits. And the next area we focus in is health. So I talked to you, those birthing kits, our mother's health layout kits. And we have a new kit this year that's focused in on feminine hygiene. So it's a reusable feminine hygiene kit. Um, Missionaries were asking for that and we're taking that in because girls are missing school. They're missing a week of school a month and so we want girls in school and we want to make give them a better life for the future. Um, and then our personal dignity kits are the most requested kit we have. This is them being taken in into Guatemala um, and this time uh, they didn't plan on, they were just going to hand the personal dignity kits out, but they ended up using one to help deliver a baby unexpectedly on this trip. The mother had walked all day, had her two children there, waited in line, waited for them to get checked out, and then quietly said, would you mind looking at me? I had water early to today. And before they knew it, there was the baby. So God has a plan in it all and has them there. Um, another new item we do is our food pack, and this is something cool we do with the University of Illinois Extension Office. So this is something we can bring to churches instead of everybody coming to us and get people involved in mission because we really feel that we're only not called to serve those 
but to get people in our church involved in missions and to help that um, bleed out into our communities and just show our communities that love. Um, but we take these blue barrels here that we get as a recycled item from another partner and the, the food goes in there. And so we ship that internationally and then they can use that to collect clean water and to put their clean water apparatus on it as well. Uh, this is medical equipment, so if you have any medical equipment sitting around your house, like walkers, crutches, canes, wheelchairs, we, that is in high demand, and we can really use that, and we're shipping those out all the time. Okay, and this is our micro business. So our last area we focus in, so we repair sewing machines and bicycles and send these out around the world. So transportation is a huge barrier for poverty in the United States and abroad, but when you give somebody a bike, they can get to school, they can get to work, they can have their own business, as you can see the guys doing it in this picture. So, And then the same with the sewing machine. A sewing machine is especially powerful for, for uh, women in our developing countries, and we send those out and repair them, and that gives them a cottage industry where they can not only receive something, they can take something and support themselves and support their families. And lastly, this mission would not happen without the help of volunteers like you. We had received a group from your church earlier this year, and it was such a great experience, and I hope they had a good experience, but we only have uh, six staff members, so the work that is done there happens by volunteers from over 13 states. We receive over 2,500 volunteers a year there. Uh, we have a campground, we have a dormitory that people can come and stay. Um, if you guys are close enough, you can drive over for the day as well, just like your team here did. Um, but if you can't come with a team, just give us a call and we'd love to receive you at any time or just take a tour of our facility. Um, it's only been around for 18 years and it grew from a 3,000 square foot room to over a 33,000 square foot warehouse on a 10 acre campus. And the other amazing thing about Midwest is we operate with no indebtedness. So we only build it or buy it if we have the money to do so. So in 18 short years, this ministry has grown from a small, kind of thing where we were sending out a couple containers a year to now sending out over 27 a year. So it's amazing to see. It's like the Field of Dreams movie. If you build it, they will come. And many people say it's this miracle that happens in a cornfield. They're not expecting what they find when they receive us, but you know from around here, miracles happen in cornfields all the, all the time. So. Um, so we love our volunteers at Midwest Mission. They're how we make things work. Um, so ways you can help, is, so Pastor Terry's not here, so if you all want to pull out your phones, feel free to do so at any time. It's okay, kids. I'm giving you the go. But you can find us on Facebook at Midwest Mission. You can also text uh, 51555 and text MMDC to that. And then you'll get on our update list of things. So anytime we're sending a container out, we will update you to let you know to be in prayer about that or be in prayer to disaster response as well. Um, you can also get on our email list. So go find us on our website, midwestmission.org. We send out weekly emails. And, you know, sometimes you get on an email list and they're always asking for stuff or they're always doing this. Well, if you want to see God's hand at work and be inspired on a weekly basis, get on our email list because you can just see miracles happen on a regular basis. And I really encourage you to do that. So lastly, I want to talk about our plans for the future. So I talked about how we've come so far in the past. But what we're doing next is we'll be building a covering for a loading dock that we'll be using to stage because we right now are sending out two international shipments a month and we hope that grows to three and four. So this is an, another area where we're gonna improve. And the last area we wanna see is like I said, we feel like we are a place that people need to come and learn about what it's like to be in, in mission and in ministry. And so we're gonna do that through a global village. And the Boy Scouts, those pictures are of the Boy Scouts and they've already laid the gravel work. And so we're gonna be looking for groups to come together to build structures of places that represent places that would be receiving things from us in other countries. So people can really take a walk and see what it's like in somebody else's shoes. I got the idea by sitting in the kitchen with my kids and I was saying, this is like, our dining room is the size of somebody's house. And my daughter's like, 
yeah, the size of their dining room. No, their house. And I could see the wheels turning, but like the blank look on our face. So um, I'm really excited for this opportunity and for people to really experience what it's like to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes. But more importantly, I want to thank you all as I close for the support that you've given Midwest Mission. Please keep us in your prayers. Please keep our denomination in your prayers. Uh, follow us on Facebook. Follow us online. Um, but our denomination is so strong because we are connected together and we're connected through our through our uh, district, through our conference, through our jurisdiction, and all over the world. And it's just amazing to see what, when we work together as a body of Christ, what we, we, we can really accomplish in Christ's name. So thank you all for your time. It's great to be back and in this community that has really shaped me into the person that I am today. So thank you all.